Yeah, I definitely agree with you on the TikTok thing. Uh, the government wants to ban TikTok because of the content of the app, not because of nebulous and hypothetical national security concerns. They don't like the ideas and messages being expressed on there, which is why right. I've been a big opponent of the TikTok ban, even though I'm pretty critical of TikTok <laughs> personally. I have a lot of issues with the app and the people on there, but uh, yeah. we're on the same page on that one. But the second issue I have with the protests is I do feel there's been a disturbing blurring of the lines. And I know that a lot of the protests have been peaceful. A lot of them are peaceful, intentioned people. But there has been video after video of people saying things that are pro-Hamas or pro-violence against Israelis at these protests. And then what concerns me is like that could have been nut picking. Like maybe I've just been watching too much Fox News. But I went and looked at the polling for this age group of 18 to 24. And I found polling from October, so after October 7th, but mm -hmm. before the full invasion of Gaza. And at that time, among 18 to 24 year olds, this Harvard Harris poll, 51% said it was justified for Hamas to slaughter mm -hmm. 1,200 Israeli civilians. That was the polling question. Mm -hmm. I see a disturbing not just anti-Israel, not just wanting to change U.S. policy towards Israel, but a support for radicalism or violence intermingled into these protests that I find really concerning. Oh, they've been like this the whole time. I mean, what? not even just about Israel. I mean, these kids have been like this about Trump, <laughs> about MAGA, right? They say, I'm going to punch a Nazi in the face, right? They've been saying that since 2016. So what we've got, I, I think it's a legitimate, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the Palestinian or the Israeli. I think it's a mindset of our youth that I, I think uh, has been very alarming to me personally as well, that they're so willing to engage in violence when they feel like there's something worth engaging in violence about. Um, to me, when it really set me off was when I, when, or the alarms were set off when, I, when they would say, I, yeah, I, I think it's justified to punch a MAGA person in the face, like they're a fascist and you would punch a Nazi in the face. So you should be able to punch a, a MAGA fascist in the face. And that was a really popular narrative that was going around um, once Donald Trump was elected to president. And so there is a there is an alarming um, trend in our youth that precedes this, that is that thinks violence is an appropriate action. We, we see that even with, um, when, especially, you know, when talking about Donald Trump, when the left begins saying things like, um, well, we're going to have to have a violent takeover then, you know, if this, if these people are going to stay in charge then we have to have this violent takeover, there's a lot more rhetoric in our younger, uh, generation Z they're going to change the world. I don't know if it's going to be for the better or for the worse, but they are, they're definitely more engaged and radical on everything. So, you know, uh, it makes sense to me that when it comes to this particular issue, they would then say similar things that they've been saying about everything else. And I don't find it just on the left, to be honest. I, I find it on all sides, right? There's like, um, they just frame it differently or it's about a different issue, but the youth seem to be much more radical. The question we should ask ourselves is what have we done to, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Palestinian youth stuck in Gaza for the last 20 years that have grown up and now they're fighters for Hamas. What did Israel do to create that situation? Um, I think it's fair to ask that without saying it's fine for them to have committed October 7th acts of violence. I think it's fair to then say, you know, is it wrong for them to have committed this type of violence on these innocent people? Absolutely. But can we also then look and say, what did, what, what led up to this? There was something that led up to this. It didn't just happen out of nowhere because these people are hateful, angry people. Something led to that. I think we need to be asking ourselves, what has led to our youth here in this country having these radical ideas where they believe they could punch a MAGA fascist in the face or that they think it's totally fine for Hamas to have broken out and killed innocent women and children? You know, what is it about them? What have we done to create this? Because we did something. It's us. It's our fault. You know, that's a really good point and a really good question that we can leave people with to ponder because it's it needs to be answered. I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure you don't have all the answers right now, but that is that is the question because I don't like where things are headed, but none of this is happening in a vacuum. Kim Iverson, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.